Amen! Fifty years ago, national service was compulsory. Every young man aged between 18 and 24 did two years in the army. From 1947 to 1961, over two and a half million young men were called up. For the conscripts, it was often their first taste of discipline. Move! Come on, move yourself! Come on! The gravy in the cookhouse moves quicker than you lot! Move it, move it, move it! You horrible people are now serving for Queen and Country. What, what are you smiling at? Do you fancy me? Have you missed your woman already? Has anything fallen in your underpants recently? Stop laughing. Stop laughing. Pick up your kit and your crap and make your way through the gate to the furthest vehicle. Come on, quickly. These lads are volunteers. But 50 years ago, they had no choice. To find out if today's youth could survive a month of basic training, 30 volunteers were required. It's the opportunity of a lifetime to go back in time. The main reason why I want to be a lads army soldier. I need something to do other than sleep. Prove to the older generation that young people aren't all that bad. My dad's put me up to this. I wanted to be in the army and train for the army, but me, me mum wouldn't let me. I'm just up for it, really. Come on, quickly! What is that in your right hand? It's a football court. Book. Is it? Let me have a look. Get your hands out your pockets and I'll rip them off. Do you understand? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Don't call me, sir. I'm corporal. That's See it again. Yes, corporal. That's still not Raise your front. Chins up everywhere. Recruit Jody Copeland has a lot to prove. Good morning, British Gas. Jody speaking. How can I help? I get shouted at every day. I work on the high level complaints team dealing with lots of angry customers. When the sergeant major shouts, it's, you know, it's probably going to be petrifying. It's going to be a lot harder than what I get shouted at at work. Come on. Come on, I because my girlfriend, Michelle, uh, said that I was a bit of a wimp. I just said to him, like, come on, wimp, just go for it. You always say you're going to do things. Uh, he doesn't actually do it. I'd like to think that I wasn't a wimp. Um, we're going to find out soon. Are you a pop? Are you sure? I'm very sure. The training camp on the south coast has been fitted out to exact 50 specifications, from the sleeping quarters to the washrooms. Everything is as it was 50 years ago. This is one section's billet. This is where I don't pay. Look at me. This is where one section will live. Come round, you idiot. There should be no reason whatsoever. What are you dancing for? What are you dancing for? Don't smile at me. Do not smile at me. So, food, money, clothing. We're going to train you to be soldiers. Afternoon, sir. Sir, Waterloo Platoon have arrived and are awaiting your address now, sir. That's Corporal then, stand at ease, please. Thank you, sir. Listen in. Stand at ease, relax. Welcome to the National Service Training Depot, the Essex Regiment. My name's Captain Owen. The aim of the next four weeks is to turn you, a greasy, long-haired, idle rabble, into professional soldiers worthy of serving in the Essex Regiment. Listen in to your section corporals and your platoon staff. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Major! Yes, sir! OK, all I can do is wish you good luck, and I look forward to seeing your progress during the next four weeks. From now until their training ends in four weeks' time, the recruits of Lads Army will have no contact with the modern world. Do you want any money? Obviously not. He's coming back in a minute, Sergeant. OK. 
Okay, come on. Sanford. Sanford. Sanford what? S Nicky Sanford. No! Sanford Sergeant. Sa Sanford Sergeant. Don't keep waving your arms like a ballerina. What are you playing at? <sighs> Surname. Hampson. Hampson what? Hampson, sir. Sergeant. Hampson Sergeant. Me, sir. Webb. Webb what? Webb. That's my surname, sir. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get Bell back in! Get Bell back in! The recruits will be under the control of two British Army Sergeant Majors, Richard Nuyarkis, who served in Kosovo and Bosnia, Can I tell you to move? and no, Joe no, Murray, well a paratrooper with active service in Sierra Leone and Northern Ireland. Luna. Yes, Corporal! Luna. Yes, Corporal! They'll be serving as 1950s corporals and have been fully briefed on how to conduct basic training as it was back then. A far cry from military practices of today. Lift your chin up, and the other one. I'm not getting paid. I just slides for in the sergeant's office. Now start running on the spot. Start running, get your knees up, get them up, get them up, get them up. Now shout it again. I'm not getting paid, so I just slides for in the sergeant's office. Now shout, I'm going to get paid, because I'm going to go in there and look smart in front of the sergeant. I ain't gonna get paid, so I ain't gonna go in and look smart from the sergeant. Did your mother give you lots of sandwiches and things to eat? No, Corporal. Well, it looks like she didn't. It looks like you ate everything. Did you steal food off people? No, Corporal. So why are you so large? Do you fancy me? No, Corporal. You a pister? Definitely not, Corporal. Definitely not. How do you know? I just know, Corporal. Uh, well, I'm not, Corporal. You've not got those tendencies, I know. Definitely not, Corporal. You are definitely not a pister. Definitely not coming. Have you ever looked at me like a seductive blonde again? I'm going to rip your arm off and hit you with a sog again, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. And don't f***ing laugh, you. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Do not laugh. <laughs> Too many of me. Ruth. Come here. You. Stop laughing. You're going to laugh when the enemy's in the further out. Get your feet out there. Go down. Come down more. There, stand there. Put your arms out straight. Put your arms out straight. I must not laugh on parade. I must not laugh on parade. Keep saying it. I'll tell you when to stop. I must not you. laugh on Same parade. Same detail. I must not laugh on parade. I, I must not, not laugh on parade. Get your backs against the wall. Get your backs against the wall. I must not laugh on parade. Now go like that with your hands. I must not laugh on parade. Keep going. I was not laughing for real. What do you never want to do? Get your ass down. I never want to laugh again, Corporal. Tell me. I never want to laugh again, Corporal. And actually. And actually, I'm quite stupid, actually. Get fell in. That's your last warning. Let's go. Mugs, China White. One. This way, mate. Three. Nice one. Go. What are you doing with that? Why are you holding these? Where were they? Where were they? Why are they there now? Huh? Tell me. I thought I'd drop it, Corporal. What, like that? Or like that? Or like that? Which way did you think you were going to drop it? You were lucky. Yours never smashed. <laughs> I'm not, I swear to God, Corporal. Now it's all good. What are you doing? Pick it up. I'm Michael Hunzik, 18. I live with my mum in Middlesbrough and I'm a student. At college I study 3D design. I really enjoy it because it allows me to get my ideas out. Um, all my thinking in my head goes onto my paper. I think the longest period of time I've been away is about two weeks last summer when I went away with the lads on holiday. And that was a good experience. But then, come the second week I did start getting a bit homesick because I'm like 18 and I'm like only young so maybe some of the other big guys might pick on me but I'm sure I'll see him off. I think there will be times he'll miss female company because he does like female company. Oh, my girlfriend Gemma bought me this little teddy um, and I've given her one and it's sort of like when I'm not there she looks to hers and when she's not there I look to mine so it sort of reminds me of her. I hope to find out my physical and mental weaknesses, how far I can be pushed. Get out there, 
Why aren't you holding that? And right, hold your arms out. Hold your arms out to there. There we go. There we go. Let me hear it. I must not laugh on parade, Corporal! In keeping with 50s military practice, the recruits are divided into two sections. Hickman, Poulter, Rossiter, One section Sanford, is run by Corporal Murray, the other Murray, by Corporal New Yorkus. No! Michael Honzik draws the short straw. Go! Ellis. Quickly! Gardner. I must not laugh on parade! I must not laugh it's going to be a long, hard month for the recruits. I must not laugh on parade. Since their arrival at Browndown training camp earlier in the day, the recruits have been divided into two sections. Their introduction to basic training has been a short, sharp shock. Sorry, Corporal. Don't be sorry, it's a sign of weakness. Didn't I say that there was a pufter somewhere in this platoon. Did I not say it? Yes, yes Corporal! Did you all stand there and flatly deny that you were not pufters? Yes, yes Corporal! So why do you two want to sleep in the same bed? Get on the bed, lay down. Get on the bed, lay down. You, get on the bed next to him, lay down. No, 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 no. You wouldn't chop and tail if you were in love, would you? You would lay next to him, wouldn't you? Do you want to lay next to him? No, Corporal! Everybody, move down one space. You, get in the bed you're supposed to be in. You in the 1950s, homosexuality was illegal. The trip back in time could be especially problematic for one recruit. My name's Ross Pittman. I live in Manchester. I'm from Glasgow. I work for a radio station as a research executive. <laughs> I think my proudest achievement to date was probably uh, appearing in the hit musical uh, Fame. The fact that uh, I've danced um, is not, probably not something that I'll tell the lads and lads army because uh, a bit of a giveaway uh, of being gay and uh, I don't want them to perceive me as being uh, particularly effeminate. People will ask, have you got a girlfriend? Um, to say no is fine, but um, you know, to start lying about it is a different matter. I miss Colin. Uh, because this is the longest time we've ever been apart. Uh, we've actually, I think, the longest, it's been a week. So this is going to be a big difference. I think I'm going to miss my bed. And uh, nice, soft clothes, uh, not horrible uniforms. So there's, there's quite a lot I'm going to miss. It's going to be a challenge, but uh, yeah, I'm going to get there. And you know, <laughs> people will remember my name. <laughs> Has anyone done any boxing? Because we're going to have to box. No. Nobody. Yeah, because there's a guy in there who can box, and, and they've got that that guy in the suit looks about that big. So I'm not the tallest. You are. No problem. No problem. It's going to be coming back in a minute, so uh, you know, keep somebody look out the window. I'm not sure. Attention! Leave your bags where they are, and get outside where I told you to form up every morning. Right, starting from you, pile in and get to your bed spaces. Do you understand? Yes, yes go, go, go. Ready? Go! In the following days, the recruits will be issued with uniforms and guns. But first, they have to learn to look after their billets. It's a matter of pride for the corporals that their section comes out on top. Everything that we ever do, we will beat them at everything. And I mean everything. What happens if I say it? We do it, Corporal! Which is the best section? One section, Corporal! Who is your best friend? I am Corporal! Laughing boy. Turn about. Get in. I do not want to see or hear from you until such time as you can stop laughing, be a part of this section and understand that I am training you to kill. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Corporal! Who is the best section? One, One section, section, Corporal! After your evening meal tonight, I'm going to go through a few points of do's and don'ts within the camp and certainly do's and don'ts within the section. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! You know the man? <laughs>
Were you trying to get that? <laughs> 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 right, it, the recruits are finally left alone to get to know each other. <laughs> he makes me laugh! <laughs> <laughs> Still my idiot. <laughs> and you make me laugh. <laughs> like whenever I say anything, you laugh. Oi, laughing boy! Get yourself <laughs> in there! Every time you laugh, you? you look down and you go, look at him, and then you go, and you start cracking up. You've got to avoid eye contact. Look at Sky the whole time. Literally, look yeah, above him the whole there. time and ignore just, everything he says. Just block don't it out, yeah. like completely, like yeah. block yeah. everything else that he says. <laughs> At least the corporal's brutality is helping break the ice. Even though they know they're wrong, they'll say they're right, and there's no point in arguing, there's no point in... And I think there's no point in trying to explain ourselves. You can't look at him. If you look at him when he's talking to you, he'll go mad. If you don't look at him when he's talking to you, he goes mad. He's a wanker all the day, isn't he? He's a right idiot. Yeah. That means we're getting up about five, you know? Yeah, that parade, five a.m. Lights out half past ten. Yeah, I'm up at half past ten. I'm not up half past five, though. Be out there. I've got a Mars bar on my back. <laughs> Mars bar? I'm good for it. Does anyone like some Mars bar as a treat? Shall I hide it as contraband? Authentic 1950s Mars bar. <laughs> Here, Mars bar's always been Mars bar. Uh, I think it's the stand by your bed. Stand by your bed. Good effort, guys. Good effort. Any problems? Any problems? No arms No heartful. You got poo in your face? <laughs> <laughs> no heartful. Swallow it. <laughs> Nothing seems to be going right for Michael Honzik. Didn't I say? Didn't I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'd kill yourself now. You must have been waiting out there. Four bars. Oh, dear. watching you, brother. It's not fair. Left the end of the mattress. The first step to becoming a 50s killing machine is learning to make a military style bed. Let it sleep then. Fold the bottom bed down and under, like that. You fold this back 12 inches. The pillar always faces away from the main door. Anybody got any questions? Make your beds. The recruits must get it right. They'll be inspected in a few hours' time. Do I just fold them under there? No, just, just the end bits. On. Just the end bit. Just where the bar is. And then you put the cover on the Then you put the blanket, blanket on, top, on top. And then you do the hospital corners as you did beforehand. One section has a secret weapon when it comes to bed making. Tom Wolfe. Unfortunately, seven years at boarding school taught me how to do this. Although I still don't think it's perfect after seven years. I'm Tom Wolfe and I'm currently coaching rugby here at my former school, the Royal Hospital School in Suffolk. I was a rugby player and I went to boarding school at Bean University. Being thrown together with a group of guys, they'll come with a kind of prepackaged kind of set of ideas that, you know, it's, it's been a background of privilege and, uh, you know, arrogant. Hopefully, people will, will judge me on, on, on the impact I have on the team rather than, you know, you know where I played rugby or, or what I did as a child. Growing up in a boarding environment, Will equip me uh, very well for this experience. In this, such an environment, you have to you have to get along with people. You get thrown in the deep end, and you have to you have to bond with people immediately. Sitting the bottom of there. Whatever was in their corporal was in there when I received them, my corporal. So you haven't cleaned it since you got it. No corporal. Good God, it's moving, man. Look, is it an animal? Have you brought a pet with you? It might be an insect, corporal. I think it's dandruff. Not that that'll affect you. What do you think's wrong with this bed? It's not central, bubble. One thing. It's a big, major thing. It really hits you as soon as you look at it. It's more than 12 inches, couple. Oh, hang on, come here. 
tail hole in the bed cover. Each lad has been issued with one china mug. Any breakages will be replaced at their own expense. Corporal New Yorkis has a special way of dealing with any dirty ones. If it breaks, you clean it. Yes, when I tell you, yes, it will appear that I'm a better shot than him. Hun it. Hun it. Break it. Too late, you only get one shot. Give it back to him. Michael Honzik is still failing to impress his corporal. Time and a place, son, this is not it. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. I must not think that I'm better than the corporal. You are no longer in civil life. You are now in the military. Yes, corporal. Look at me. Don't do it. Yes, corporal. Corporal New Yorkers doesn't want any jokers in his section. Go! He has a new strategy to get through to Michael. One section, I am sorry. 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 Hunnitz, come here. I am now getting pissed off with his laughter. I have a job to do. I cannot do that job if the comedian is constantly on my case. So I am no longer going to punish Hunnitz. From now on, you will all suffer every time he gives me a smart remark or he starts laughing. Do you understand? Yes, Colonel! Everybody up against the wall. Sit in position, go. Walk up to every individual and tell them that you're sorry you're putting them through this. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if you keep screwing up, I'm going to suffer. Louder! I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. I'm sorry, and if I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. What'd you say? If I keep screwing up, you're going to suffer. Make them stop, Corporal. Give me a reason to make them stop. Because it's not their fault. So why should I make them stop? Because I'm going to stop, Corporal. Are you sure? Yes, Corporal. I'll try my best, Corporal. Stand up. Corporal New Yorkers believes it's done the trick. At first he appeared to be a funny guy, and then it just became very monotonous. However, I think that we've... Uh, We've taken that out of him now and he just wants to be a part of the team and get on with it. Now that he knows it's me, he's like, any little thing I do, but he's like picking up on it. But I think he'll know now that I'm going to pack it in. Because I don't want him to see me as like a clown, because I'm not. As the lads prepare for their first night, the reality of 50s basic training is starting to sink in. It's been gruesome in terms of how they've treated you so far, but that's just toughen you up, see who's going to take it. We thought the sergeant was bad, but when we finally got here and we met the corporals, I think I, I, I suddenly wanted, I thought, oh, heck, what have I done here? I wanted to, I wanted to go home. Night, 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 John boy. Night, John boy. Gentlemen, good night. Good night, corporal. Good night, corporal. <laughs> It's 6 a.m., the lads' first morning away from home. They're in for a rude awakening. Get something on your feet and get out on the mat. Hurry up. 10, 9, 8. Where is your toes? Well, use your underwear. Get a move on. Come on. Get in threes. We're in the army now. Come on. Come Even on. though it's May, at 6 a.m. the temperature is a chilly 8 degrees. Why are you not washed and shaved yet? Hurry up! Hurry up! Make sure you wash under your arms because you stink! 
What do you do? Why? How can you wash with your glasses on, you lunatic? If your nuts are sweaty, wash them. In the early morning rush, there's something one section has overlooked. None of you, not one of you, can be asked to get your beds made. I find that extremely strange. That is just like taking the piss out of me. Now then, get yourselves ready for breakfast. Let's go. Do me a favour, because yes, I'm a very busy man. Go and log that outside. You want to strip your bed down before I get the opportunity to do it? You have 30 minutes before breakfast. When I come back in here, I expect this room to be absolutely immaculate, bedding and all. What do you do with your beds in the morning? Bed bed box. Box. So why aren't they there? Get on with it. If they can't get their blankets folded into what's known as a bed box, they won't be joining two section for breakfast. It's not much of an incentive. Cold, greasy egg sandwich at seven o'clock in the morning. It's not my usual staple breakfast, so. It's, uh, it's kind of hovering around here, so I'm trying to mentally get it to, to go down and stay there. When I start running, then you'll probably see it again. It'll, I'm sure he'll rear his ugly head and say hello again. Hopefully the bed boxes are now up to scratch. Look at that. If that was a face, it would be a smashed in face, wouldn't it? Because it is down at that end, up at that end, and sort of smiling in the middle. Should it be confused on the end of your bed? No, Corporal. Where would it be better suited being confused? Under my bed, Corporal. Really? OK, get your bed box and put it under your bed and talk to it and cheer it up. And when it comes back out, make it nice. It will not be happy unless you talk to it. Copeland! Talk to the friggin' bed box! OK, Corporal. Come on, bed box. Can make you happy, come on. Come on, bed box. I'm gonna cheer you up. Is it ready to come out? No, Corporal. Well, get under there, make it ready. Faulkner, who is hiding in the edge of your blanket there? No one, Corporal. But you agree that there is room for somebody to get in there? I certainly do, Corporal. Call them! Who's in my bed box? <laughs> Copeland, talk to your bed box. Come on, bed box. Why are you all giggling? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, get in your lockers now. Everybody. Copeland, get out, go round, close all the lockers. Copeland, quickly, quickly. I am not running a platoon as you were, a section of clowns. However, that is the way it is starting to appear because you have no control at all, do you? No, do you? No, While one section sorts out their beds, Two section are taking their biggest step so far to becoming real 50s soldiers. In the 1950s, an army haircut was a rite of passage for National Service conscripts. Army barbers were famous for their interpretation of the short back and sides, a style which the lads' army barbers seem to be taking to new extremes. Last one for the chop is Steve Daly. Music. I love my music, I love my decks, I'm gonna miss all that sort of thing. My mum would uh, love it if I come home and I was Mr. Domestic. I don't do anything around the house, I'm terrible. I don't know how to iron, I don't know how to work the washing machine, I burn every bit of toast to do, so it's gonna change me in that department. I'd like Steve to be a bit more independent in, at, at home, so he can learn, hopefully learn how to iron. 
Even if I could, I probably still wouldn't, because that's one of the joys of being at home. <laughs> You've got to take advantage to that last minute. <laughs> oh, he spends hours. Sorry, Steve, but you do. You spend hours in the bathroom mirror, putting that gel on your hair <laughs> and doing it and coming back and then doing it again. In fact, he's worse than his mother, and that's saying something. <laughs> I am absolutely dreading having my hair cut off because I've done it once before. I had a skinhead and I looked like there was something wrong with me. So I'm not looking forward to that again. <laughs> Unfortunately for Steve, the army barber only knows one style. Short. Just as it was 50 years ago, our recruits must undergo a thorough medical examination before joining the British Army. You better yeah. agree with the section today, cos it ain't happening, do you understand? Yes, Corporal. Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Drop him! Hold your hands in front of you and cover your manhood. Now, heels together. Heels together. Really? The lads undergo a series of tests to ensure they're all fighting fit. Good eyesight, a healthy heart, and a sense of balance are all vital, as is the ability to cough on demand. Take your pants off, take your pants off. <coughs> Having passed the medical, the recruits head for the quartermaster's store. Here they're issued every bit of kit a 50 soldier would have had. We are giving you money. We are giving you clothes. We are giving you food. And we are going to give you muscles that you never knew existed. Boots, ammunition, one pair. Water bottle, two by blue enamel. Helmet, steel, one pair. Full full elastic, two pairs. I honestly think that you are hard enough to eyeball me. Do you think that? No, Corporal. Do you? No, Corporal! You got a girlfriend? Yes, Corporal. She's nice. Lovely Corporal. She love her? Yes, Corporal. You were going to say no there, weren't you? No, Corporal. You were going to say no there, weren't you? No, Corporal. I assume now that if you drop anything between here and the billet, that belongs to me. Over to the block. No. Look, you try, you don't try hard enough. These are some some sort of insult to the fashion industry as we know it, so yeah. Yeah, these are the latest designer pants. And uh, you've got gym kit, you've got nice little pimp soles to match your skinhead. A bit of a perverts type jacket there. I can't describe it. It smells old, and it just smells of um, of pain. Like in terms of you're going to get put through it in this. The lads will be reunited with their own clothes at the end of basic training, but from now on, it's uniforms all the way. The transformation is complete. Not everyone got a perfect fit. I think they've purposely done it. Georgie, no I'll doubt. Have you. you got a small one? Yeah. Look, my arms yeah. are up here. That's going to fit me, isn't it? Yeah, I reckon. Come on. My well, trousers are still a bit big, but. Nice one. That must fit you. Yeah. It does, and this one's smaller. Good lad. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Jordy. You look fit to be in the Queen's Army. So do you, France? When the uniforms, when we got our uniforms, and, and with the shaving of the heads, which at the time there was a rush of adrenaline. There's mine. Uh, and everyone was doing it, and then, then we finished it. We came out and we looked at each other and thought, cracky, we're in the army.
Don't move! Yesterday, these young men were students, postmen and shop assistants. From now on, they are Waterloo Platoon, Essex Regiment. Today, any personal belongings get sent home. The lads are only allowed to keep three items each, as long as they were around in the 50s. Well, the second I walked in the camp, he kicked my football away, so I haven't seen that again. I was going to keep my book, but I'm not allowed that because I wasn't from the 50s. So I've got photographs from back home. And Teddy Bear, my girlfriend, gave that's my good luck charm. Reminds me of her and I don't know, sits in there all quiet to itself. It'll be the corporal's decision what they can keep. All the boys are inside and they're all talking amongst themselves. So I'm listening at the door to see if I can hear what they're talking about. That will definitely have to go over the office. What year is that? This month. Actually. I'm quite stupid, actually. Anybody else got any confessions? Who's that with her, your brother? That's me. Can you not cut one out? I can do, Corporal, yes. Do you yes. mind doing that? Cut one out and get rid of it, because it's just not authentic. It, it was my birthday yesterday, and um, because I couldn't, didn't get to celebrate it with my family, um, they, uh, my mum bought me a cake, just a small cake. So I put it aside and thought, okay, well I'll, I'll save that until I'm really tired and eat the sugar. And uh, it's been taken off me now, so I won't get it back till the end of training. Gentlemen, anything else? That is the last of the niceties. If I find anything from here on in, then the shit will hit the fan. Right, lads. No, 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 no. Shut you up. can't have that. It's got no label on it and it's from my girlfriend. That really is like what you got there. At least Ross Pittman's birthday cake is in safe hands. Mm. Right, everybody down here. For the next four weeks, the lads will be responsible for keeping their barracks clean. But first, they need to be shown how. First of all, you sweep the area. There, area swept. And lay down the polish. Stand on a blanket and walk along the given area. I want the whole floor polished, bumpered. Any questions? No, Crumple. Good. Tomorrow there's an inspection by the sergeant. One section needs to get moving. We've got to polish the floor, which people keep walking all over with the boots. But it's our first attempt, so we're not going to get it right first time. On a routine locker search, Corporal Murray has found some contraband belonging to the opposite sex. Gentlemen, have we got a poofter in this section? No, 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 no! Haven't we? Well, everybody, turn round and look this way. Tell me... Who's these are? If you don't admit it, I'm going to have yous outside and I'm going to beast everybody. Because I know what locker I took them out of. Whose are they? So you're not going to tell me? So you're not going to admit it? Get outside now. <coughs> We're going to have a little game, aren't we? We're going to have a relay race. You're going to keep running round that block with both of these in your arms until every one of you drop. Take them. Keep your arms up. Stand by. Go. Round the block. Hurry up. Get your arms up. Not get the moral courage to own up. 
Put your nose on the ground. Stand by. Take the weight. Take the weight. Jog on the spot. Don't worry about that. Get the knees up. Get them up. They'll be beasted until the corporal gets a confession. Who's are they? Right, line up against that wall. Come on. You think this is pissed off, gentlemen? It gets harder. Trust me. One simple question. One man to own up. One man. Who's are they? Give me the answer. Sam Webb has owned up. Stop. Stand up. But Corporal Murray isn't convinced he's telling the truth. Where is your bed? In there? At the end. On what? At the end where? Top left. Top left. These were found in the fourth or fifth locker down on the left. He's had the moral courage to admit for something that he didn't do. Because they're not his. Are they yours? No, Colonel. I'm not no, a I'm Colonel, I'm Corporal. I mean, no, Corporal. So that's what you call a friend. So the culprit is still in amongst you. And you have got, got till after dinner to find out who's they are. Because if I don't get a name, I will keep you up all night doing that. Get inside there, get your uniform sorted down. Well done. Captain! Captain! File in from the left. Buy what you need to buy. Go. For the time being, the lads are off the hook, which means a trip to the Nafi, a social club and tuck shop for the forces. It also means getting used to 50s money. If you want something for sure, you want a toilet roll and it's a shilling, you can either give me two sixpences or you can give me that. Right. Or you can give me a half a crown and I'll give you two bob back. <laughs> He's more confused See? now than when he was Yeah, that's what I mean. Because I want to know what each one is worth. Just think about old money, not new. Can I have um, envelopes and paper, some razor blades, and <coughs> some toilet paper? They're so nervous. They really are. But it's their first day, isn't it? But if they can just let their hair down and get to know each other, really, because that's what the daffy's about, isn't it? Just to relax and, and, and just let their hair down. In this morning's rush to be ready for inspection, one lad forgot something vital for a 50s recruit. Corporal Murray doesn't miss a thing. Did you have a wash this morning? I didn't have time, Corporal. So you didn't have time, so that's why you were stinking, was it? Yes, Corporal. Listen to the medic. Take your clothes off. Get a move on. Yes, Corporal. I'm not exactly the fittest pee in the pod. I don't like getting up early. Running has never really been my strong suit unless I absolutely need to. But at the end of the day, it will be an interesting test to see whether I can cope with doing it. I think they're going to find it very difficult to cope with the National Service because, I mean, you, all the home comforts that we take for granted. The whole British Army could walk through his bedroom, tanks as well, and he'd never wake up because he just doesn't. Once he's asleep, he seems to be dead to the world. When some older person comes up to me and goes, back in my day when we done national service, I can stand there and say, I done national service. It weren't as bad as you're making out. Quick. Let this be a lesson. If you can't look after yourself in barracks, how are you expected to look after yourself in the field? You will become a casualty. The next time this happens, I will use a brush with very hard bristles to scrub you. Whose knickers are these? Two o'clock in the morning springs to mind. The mind corporal. The mind the corporal. corporal. The mind the corporal. Mind corporal. corporal. Stop it. There'll be no going to bed until the culprit owns up. Start sparking tomorrow, gents. I've not got a name for these. I know whose they are, because I know what locker I took them out of. I just want them to have the moral fibre to own up in front of each section. 
mine, Corporal. Why didn't you own up before? Don't know, Corporal. So if I asked you to come forward and attack an enemy machine gun post, you wouldn't do it, would you? Because you'd just sit there where one of the other muckers took the rap. Give you something to use as a cloth now, haven't you? Yes, Corporal. Carry on, gents. The Corporal seems happy with the latest confession. He threatened to get us up at 2 o'clock in the morning, so I just said they're mine. And he said, thank you for admitting it. And I just went, oh, my God, because uh, they're not mine. <laughs> As day two comes to an end, one recruit is starting to crack. Paul Clayden, who earlier received the shower punishment. I miss my family more than I thought I would. Uh, the fact that I haven't been able to eat properly has weakened me considerably. If it's this bad now, I'll be in a I'll be a wreck by the end of the, by Sunday. I will just be in pieces, and I I'd rather leave now than try and keep what little sanity I have left before I have a complete shutdown.